Okay. One second. Right. Now, uh, let's delete this. We are going to see uh, how to construct a bone for spine. So slowly, by this week, no, we will uh, we will cover whatever possible uh, extent we can cover for a human biped rib. We will cover. First, it, we will start with the spine rib. And delete these things, and then go to the right orthographic viewport. And you can see this floor line, green color line. There is a floor line where I am in object mode. I'm going to add and then armature. Fine. And going into edit mode and then making it little bigger. Right. Pan the viewport down and then press E in the keyboard and then press control also and just add one more bone again add extrude it one more bone then E then one more small bone now it's finally a big bone right so this is looking like a spine generally how we uh, draw bones for spine so like that it is looking we will we'll name it later, we will name it. So now we will start the next uh, what we have to do. So, see, when the uh, for spine, we cannot add something so uh, flexible. So, what we have to do, we need that articulation. This is one articulation. This is one articulation, this is and this is. So four articulations are there totally. So there should be four articulations and rest of the spaces, that is, if you see this length and this length should be rigid only, it should not be so flexible. Uh, if it is too flexible, it won't look good. It may, uh, that is only for very, uh, the body, the torso, which is, too lengthy and uh, if it is a little soft and uh, narrow, not fat, then it is okay. But mostly our bodies, if you see our torso, it is it is made up of uh, rib cage in the top and then hip bones in the uh, down. So only in the middle part it is soft. Even that the spinal cord is supporting so mostly it is uh, it is not it is inflexible it is not so soft okay so based on that only we have point okay based on that only we have coined that uh, first three bones for um, what abdomen, thorax, and then chest, and then neck, and then finally head. Okay, right. Now, now we shall name it. Okay, so for the armature, we can name something like uh, like man character or something. Then, no, this is how this is abdo. This is thorax, chest, and then neck bone, finally head bone, right. Now we have, we have drawn these, how many bones, five bones are there. Let's uh, display the name also for them. So we should go to data properties of the bone and then switch on in the viewport the names so that we can see the names right. now let's keep it like this yeah. now we have to create the controls for moving this okay so if you see 
in blender rig we have deformed bones and then controlled bones so one bone that is deformed bones they are responsible for uh, 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 like influencing the mesh and the controlled bones is uh, responsible for influencing the bones deformed bones so uh, controlled bones are influencing deformed bones deformed bones are influencing the mesh so this is a cycle okay now let's create the controlled bones now if you see we can uh, even some people know they just go to pose and then they can like this only they can animate a lot but still no uh, if you have this ik system inverse kinematic system embedded into this uh, spine uh, it will be nice so that uh, we can we can move it move two bones at a time or even more more than two bones at a time okay? it will rotate as well as move so these multiple effects we will get using while using the inverse kinematics uh, system right so for creating the inverse system and uh, kinematics first we have to do the uh, parent child relationship uh, between the controls and the deformed bones only then we can go for the constraints and all that is ik inverse kinematics they are all uh, coming under the drivers and constraints in blender right. now let's create and uh, we are in edit mode we are going to create the bones uh, control bones so in blender the advantage is even after animation even after you uh, keep framing the animation you can come back to edit mode and uh, rearrange that is you can um, change the parent child relationship uh, in edit mode in maya software or any other software it's not possible only in blender it's possible because uh, for bones we have you have uh, object properties and then data properties and then bone properties and bone constraint properties like the four you have so from four perspective you are seeing same thing uh, so you why they have given four windows so that you can have control over it separately uh, through when you come through this uh, object data properties or bone properties you will have a different control over it so like that they have segregated uh, like that in such a way that you can uh, individually control certain aspects of the bones this is very important to understand only then uh, you will with understanding you will do something otherwise um, i am seeing sir, there is students nowadays they are just seeing the youtube and doing just copying it or some three four youtubes they are watching and just copying what they are seeing in them they don't want to understand anything they just want to do something okay so no you have to understand only then you will do something of your own okay without watching any youtube uh, for a product you will create your own product that is very important so for that understanding is needed so theory is also a part now we are actually doing theory as well as practical both both are there. now you are going to create the control bones let's uh, select it and switch on the transparency also on the top so that we can see the bones which we are going to draw inside the bone also right. i am in the right orthographic view because spine we it is uh, we have to create the control bones uh, from the right side only now i am pressing e extrude and then pressing control so that it can snap to the grid grid points right okay this is okay for me Okay. Now I'm selecting it and naming, renaming it as CTL. Um, 
Abdo or something. Hmm? Abdo Global. Hmm? GL for Global. Right. Now I will tell you why we are naming it as Global. Hmm? Now one more I will create and then escape, go to press N and then go to transform panel, reduce the length like this. So you can see it, I will zoom for you. See, both are there. One is, one will control individually only this bone. Another, this global will control entirely. If I move this, entire spine will move. So for that, huh? right. now I am going to name this also as local. I will just put L, okay. Uh, local L, because L means for blender it is left. Huh? Uh, R means right for blender. So let's name it as local only. So we have two. One is control abdo global, control abdo local. Right. This we need not separate it. That is, there is no parent child relationship. So we need not separate it. Right. Now again here also press E and then extrude it. Make it bigger at this same level. Now we have to separate this or key clear parent. Now rename this also CTL and then uh, this is like thorax and then local. Again okay, local, same thing we are repeating. Let's rename this. Okay. Naming is important. Okay, once you do the rig, then if you want to uh, rectify something or correct something or change something, uh, it will be difficult to do that. So, and also for vertex groups, that is when you are doing weight painting at the time, uh, if you had named it, be very useful. Now, the next here we have to create the same thing. Let's rename this. So here I have to name it as chest. Chest. So last one we did not have uh, create anything here, but only here. So just for the head. If I move the head, both neck and head will move. So we don't have to create one for neck and one for head. No, just for head we have to create. I'm just creating it. Let's call to P, clear parent. And for this one, we don't need the local control. Just uh, global control is enough. That is one single control is enough. Now, so, now, you see, you go to perspective, you can see uh, there is, sorry, post mode. You see like this. 
Let's switch on the X-ray. Let's do the parent child relationship here. So, this local becomes the child of local. Okay. I'm selecting the local and then global control P. Again, select this one, this one. Fine. Right. Now we have done this one. So between these guys also there should be a parent child relationship. That is these controls and between them what is the relationship? What is the order? Under whom uh, this head will be there and thorax, chest, and all will be there. So that we are going to group. Uh, so first head will be under the chest. Then chest will be under the thorax. The thorax will be under the abdomen. Right now, let's go to post mode and then just see move it like this. Okay, fine. If I want to move this one, only it is moving. If I want to move this chest one, only chest and head will move. If I move this one, uh, thorax, chest, head, everything will move. If I move this one, entire thing will move. Okay. So this is the hierarchy right here. One more thing is if you select this one, you see only this one is moving. Okay. So this is the effect to move. Only this one is moving. Right. Right. Now go to post mode. And uh, so who will come under, now we have uh, completed creating the relationship between the controls. Now it is between the deformed bones and the control bones. So this head is going to be under the control head, offset, keep offset. Now this guy also under the this guy local not the global. See this this guy is a child and this ch uh, control chest local is a parent. That would be the offset. Control P. Opposite. Same thing I am doing. Uh, thorax uh, deformed bone is under the uh, control thorax local. Now, this abdo bone is going to be under the abdo local. So, if you go to the hierarchy in the schematic view that is outliner you can see all that so this is how the um, what the hierarchy should be see under the thorax global you can see local and then this one also thorax deform bone chest deform bone under the chest local head uh, deform bone under the head um, Global. Now let's go to post mode and just check it. Now if I move it, this is separately moving. 
this is what we want okay and this is also moving fine this is also moving like this fine the f thing is moving so i rotate also pretty nicely rotate okay so like this we can rotate and then mark this okay Let's go back to the. One thing we have to check is, see in edit mode, you should uh, be sure of what the role is. Okay, role number. It is like in Maya we have freeze transformation. Same way here also we have that. But in case of bone, it is not all transforms. It is role. Uh, so uh, role mostly if it is zero it is nice if it is any other like 90 or 180 is also okay but if it is like in between sometimes we we'll have when we are drawing bones for the fingers it will be like uh, 48 or uh, 96 like that it will be so uh, you have to be careful uh, it can be some numbers can be there apart may not be zero always but you should know that just be as just go there and have a look that okay roll is not zero or 90 or 180 it is some in between number now now i am just going to uh, this one is okay so this guy is going to become the, you see, uh, in IK, that is inverse kinematics, uh, when you give the bone IK, you have to keep the IK uh, at the end of the uh, bone, right? Where the effector is, there only you have to keep the, that is, this is the head. This is the body of the bone and this is the tail. So at the tail only we should keep the IK control or IK bone. So here that is the way it is. See here head is there, body is there and then uh, this uh, what is it? the tail also is there. So this control is connected to the tail. If I move this you know the very well. See if I move it. Now it's going to move. So when this guy is moving, I want this guy also to move, orient. This neck bone should uh, orient along with the top of the head bone. So I go to edit mode and then, okay, sorry. That is uh, in Blender, we have to do parent child relationships in edit mode and constraints and drivers in the post mode yeah. let's go to the post mode and then select the control bone and then neck bone shift i okay Okay, now let's make it one. Okay. So we have added the IK, inverse kinematics, the uh, neck bone. Now let's go to edit mode and then, sorry, in the post mode only we can check. Just move it and see. Okay, fine. Right. Now the next thing is we have to do the same for the um, thorax bone. Select the select the local bone. You can do it. We go to bone constraint, IK kinematics, inverse kinematics, and then choose the armature. And then bone 
is going to be just local now just apply one here now let's move this and see ah, okay. so you see the difference is why we had to add local and global because if I want to move entirely from here from here that is from here to here if I want to move okay then I will use what this one okay for suppose if I want to Move only this part, okay. We can select this one. See, so this is the type of control we want. Okay, sometimes you want to move only the rib cage. Rib cage means your chest portion. Only that I want to move means I can use a local. If I want completely from the ribcage to that is from the chest to the head everything should move means I can move I can use the global now this one also yeah Select this one, we go like K, one, two, and then it is, in this case, it is the rats local. No? Same way here, individually, if you want to move only the navel part of the Spine, you can move. If you want the entire thing to move, let this open it. Now, this for this one, you need not do anything, doesn't need any IK or any driver, so simply we can just move it. That's it. And then this will entirely move it. If I want to rotate or scale or anything, you can do it. So this is a abdomen control. Now, if you see, uh, when the rib cage is moving, I want to rotate it like this. Okay. But if I rotate it, this thing also should move. Uh, that is rotate. This thorax, little it should uh, rotate actually. Not fully, but little actually at least it should rotate. So how to make it rotate? We are going to use. Till now we have been using the um, parent-child relationships between the control bones and the deformed bones. Then uh, we had to use the constraints that is IK bones we had to use um, between the control and the deformed bones. Then now we are going to use the drivers. So there we are going to use if the chest is going to uh, rotate the thorax, thorax bone also should rotate uh, along with that. So, Select this, select this thorax. Who is the slave and who is the master? Uh, we should design before the uh, before creating the drivers for this. So this guy is a slave. That is, he is going to be driven by something. That is why we call them drivers. Okay. So he is this uh, thorax bone is going to be driven by. Uh, 
um, a control and if I select this one you see um, like when I am I'm going to rotate this one this guy also should rotate but in the in this case no that is local he is just a moment we have to lock the rotations this guy is going uh, will be responsible only for the movement that is only for the location other rotation and the scaling will be locking for me later we will be doing that now so select the slave first for the slave only we have to apply the drivers selected it Let's, which axis we should see see it is in global you can see it is in global um, so let's change it to normal so change the transform orientation to normal and then you can decide which axis we have to give the drivers apply the drivers so here in this case it is y axis so I'll click on uh, one more thing is uh, you must be aware of this uh, I don't know I don't think you are uh, you have learned this rotation mode means what okay uh, if the uh, session is interactive it will be nice actually uh, so rotation mode means uh, which one is first which one is last okay X is first. Suppose you are animating, you are animating X axis, Y axis, Z axis. In this some 90 degrees, in this another 90, here also 90 or 180 something. Huh? Then which one should this follow? That is what you are, uh, the, when you are animated, that is first key you will uh, you will start. You will key the animation for some bone or any uh, any object. Then in tenth frame or something, you will key another key after rotation. Okay. So you will you would have done some X Y or Y Z or X Z like that in combinations at least two axes at a time. You would have animated. Now which axis the blender should animate first? And then y, uh, and then second axis. So that is a deciding factor here in the rotation. So these things you should understand. Okay, which one is this? Euler in this uh, x y z. X is first, y is second, and z is second, uh, third. In the x z y, first is x, and then z is second, y is third. Like that it is for the others also. And this quaternion and axis angles are, we can use it, but uh, it won't have, especially quaternion, it won't have um, the degrees. If you see in quaternion, see if I change it to quaternion, see it is already in quaternion. See, it will be like this only. one see when I rotate this you see what is happening I have rotated it see on the left side you can see the special manipulation numbers on the top here you can see here here in this region you can see a special manipulation uh, numbers will be seen there will be shown there See, when I am rotating in the X, you see that it is um,
So when I rotate this, it is coming to 0.4 only. It is not coming. Uh, it is not showing like it is at least 45 degrees. See if I change it, it will show it. See, it is 43.6 degrees. But it is showing what in quaternion only 0.9 or something. So it is uh, it is like almost like location or something. It is not degrees. It is uh, rotation mode of quaternion will not function like degrees. It will function like other scale and location. There are no there are no degrees. So that is why people prefer sometimes quaternion. But here, let's prefer this Euler. Let's go for the Euler. In quaternion, the advantage is you won't get this gimbal lock. Gimbal lock means <coughs> you will. Uh, that is, when you rotate this x-axis like this, and then y-axis, this z-axis also on the right side or left side, they both will become. Uh, closer together and you will have to next time you cannot rotate further the same object so what you have to do you have to create one more parent for it and then do the animation for the same thing so this problem where you will face is when the character is doing uh, so much salt like like multiple rotations if it is doing on the uh, on the air no? when it is jumping and all at that time you will, fe you will face this problem so if you are going to do such kind of animations and that time you can use the quaternion but if you are switching on the quaternion after animation you should not switch on because once you give the driver here and then if you change it the drivers uh, that uh, influence won't be there here won't influence it. So you should keep the whichever you are choosing while applying the drivers or animation that only you should maintain till the last. Yeah. Now let's choose the XYZ Euler rotation only which is the degree type of rotation. Let's delete all these things. Select this one. So we have to see which axis uh, this needs. When this guy is rotating in Z, this guy should rotate in the Y. Right. So let's go to Y axis and right click here also. You can do, but not never here. Okay. In the object properties, you should not do that. Here also, you will see the transform. Here also, you will see the transform. But only here you should do. That is, this and this are same. This and this are not same. This is the ultimate. This is of armature, and this green color is of bone. So only for the bones you should apply this driver. Okay, let's see. let me go to the y-axis right click and then add driver once you add driver it comes like this you can go here either you can do it here itself or you can come here and then go to drivers and open it here press home button here so that it will become everything will be seen here now press T and then make it linear. Now right. so if you select this one now, you will see the like the details of the keyframe handle. That is a, it is having tangent handle or no. So it's all these details are the which keyframe, which value. Keyframe means it's time. Value means it is space. 
so time and space here so keyframe and value are here and we can see drivers all the here in the drivers we have to write our expression the var means variable huh? what kind of variable it is that is uh, that is how with what equation you are going to uh, make it bring it under control so let me go to the we are choosing the transform channel property and our mature in the object in the bone we are going to choose which one control thorax control thorax bone uh, no sorry control control chest control chest to bone <coughs> now let's uh, which is the axis which is going to control it's going to be z axis of the chest control we saw that see z axis of the chest control you can see that z axis means it's blue right so i go select it back <coughs> so You, you can just switch off this one and then select everything so that even then that is if you don't want this to disappear even if I'm not selecting it it won't it won't uh, disappear or now we make it uh, switch on this now Z rotation auto euler and then local space Let's go to location and see it. Let me animate this also so that no, every time we may not go there and we may not come out and do this. So let's animate in the z axis. Yeah, it is rotating. Only thing, if it is, this guy is going to rotate this much, see when I am rotating it, it is it need not rotate this much. So what I am going to do is, I am going to select this, go to the drivers, back to drivers, and then uh, right here, by 5 or something. Once I put 5, it is changing, right? So now let's let's just uh, scrub and see. So this is rotating. This is rotating uh, more. The, uh, the quantity of rotation is more for the chest, whereas for the for this one it is very less. So you can see the difference. So still more. If you want, I can make it lesser. We'll go back to the drivers. Select it and make it back to 
bring you on. So it is now bit less from 68 to 53 it has come down. Right. Now here also I can just make it even more lesser by dividing it by 10. Now uh, we can actually see if I move it. Now this guy is moving. Okay, that is if I rotate this, this guy also it will rotate move thorax. Now what I want to do is I want to that uh, is when I move it little. Uh, away from the end of the neck bone, it should not go this much. Okay, this separation should not happen. What will happen in the mesh? This uh, it will get stretched. So to avoid that, we are going to select this one and then go to bone drivers and then. Copy location. Let's just you can see it how it looks. Armature. And then neck is going to control it. And then make it to one. So now I am going to move this and see. Okay. So for me, this if the control is moving somewhere here and there, it's okay. See, the control is going far from the object. But the deformed bones between themselves should not have a gap. So that we should avoid. Huh? Maximum we should avoid. Let's look at zero. So same thing we are going to do for the um, this guy also, the chest. We have selected the chest and then going for the copy location on the two. This thorax okay. save effect all good. So here also we need the same thing.
Okay. So this is how we should build the spinal cord bone. Huh? You should practice it at home only then you will understand the next lesson. So tomorrow we can have the next lesson. Um, so see. If you want to change this, that is if you don't want to have locals, then what you should do is, you should not make these relationships between the locals. That is the big one, this big one and this big one should not have any parent-child relationship. So that you can, when there is no, uh, when the head is not the child of this chest, then when I can move the child independently, this kind of effect we can do. Like this we can do. But if you want this effect, uh, that is, you want the parent-child relationships as well as the individual movement effect also, then you should have this global local. Uh, when you are doing this local and global, you may get confused, I don't know. So, if you can uh, do and show me, you know, so that I will become clear that, okay, you have understood, you have listened to this class and then uh, you have understood. So that it will be easy for me to go for the next lesson. Uh, mm -hmm. right. Any doubts you have? You can tell me any doubts you have, till now whatever I have been, I have been telling you, you can tell me what doubts you have, or, um, what you will do, that is when you are doing spine trick, how you will do, that is you will just gender, uh, like create the spine, just to draw the spines and then animate that only, or use just circles and then uh, copy rotation and just uh, rotate it like that or you will create a rig like this how how you will be doing hmm? you can tell me openly see in this rig we are using ik and then copy location drivers all these are we are touching them and then doing a small rig okay when you are doing only, you will understand. By yourself, when you are in my absence, when you are doing, you will understand. Uh, this spinal cord, whatever is being done here, the type of thing we have done, is can be applied for many type of rigs. It can be like uh, for a robo kind of rig or or uh, any other mechanical uh, object for that also you can apply the same way so it is not just for human character mm -hmm. so if you do this if you practice this uh, you, if this can be applied for many uh, such mechanisms mm -hmm. right. if you have doubts you can tell me mm -hmm. Like ask me like uh, what what is the constraint we used? What is the driver we used? Why should we uh, make the driver gra uh, driver's uh, graph make it linear? Why should we do that? And why should we type in the variable expression field uh, divided by ten or five or four or whatever? Why should we do that? Like that you can ask me some some questions. Mm -hmm. I will get to answer. At least you should tell me that you have already done this or you have not at all done this. Something you should tell me. Or you can, if you are a little bit shy of telling, you can just type at least. Ah, uh, uh, okay, okay. So why why I am asking you is only when it is interactive, no? Uh, yeah, yeah, I will know that you are listening. <laughs> Otherwise, 
whether in college or not in COVID time, uh, students will be somewhere else. They may have some work or something. So uh, the teacher will be <laughs> just like that. He will be just telling everything, and students will be there too. Yeah, I know you guys are there only, so no problem. So do you do you, did you do you understand this really? Like, can you do it without myself, without your teachers? Okay, okay, okay. So the thing is, no. Here uh, in this, we don't have to do the forward kinematics. We can use this. Uh, IK and then using the IK whatever we have done some bit complex mechanism that we can use. If this forward kinematic sometimes no, it's like uh, like when it comes to dancing and all, you will want to uh, protrude only this middle place, like only this hip, hip region you want to do like this or uh, this region you want to do like this or someone is hitting him at that time like uh, that will go so at the time you can just select it like that you can dodge it so those kind of things you can do mm -hmm. and if you in the this is just assume this as front there you can just move it on the right side to left side left side to right side as you see so this also you can do I'll show you the character of what I have done. It is entirely done using this one. You see this, okay, it's animated. Okay, in press pose, I can show you. You see this. Same way to do. Two more extra bones are there. I didn't. Yeah, yeah, in the response we cannot move it. So, like this only we have done it. Mm -hmm. Some bones we can add, these kind of ribcage bones, I call it. If we add these bones, no, we need not much work on the uh, weights modification, that is weight painting, no? we did not much work on that so that uh, I, we had to put that this we did not work on the this thing will occupy this place so that Otherwise, uh, when the hand is moving, this part also will move. So to avoid that, we have to add a bone here, uh, so that our work will become less. So, so like this, we'll be doing. You know, slowly, we'll be covering the rig. Whatever extent we can go uh, in one week or two weeks, no? we can slowly do it. You know? Okay. Uh -uh. Yeah, yeah, tell me. Yeah. 
മലയാളത്തിൽ പറഞ്ഞോളൂ മലയാളത്തിൽ പറഞ്ഞോളൂ മലയാളം മലയാളത്തിൽ കൺട്രോൾ ബോൺസിൽ പാടില്ല കറക്റ്റാണ് ഓട്ടോമാറ്റിക് ബോൺസ് അത് ആ അതെ അതെ അതായത് വിഷ്ണു പറയുന്നത് എന്താണെന്ന് വെച്ചാൽ കൺട്രോൾ ബോൺസ് മെഷിനെ സ്വാധീനിക്കാൻ പാടില്ല ഇൻഫ്ലുവൻസ് ചെയ്യാൻ പാടില്ല ആ സോ അതിനാണ് ആ അത് ഡി ഫോം ഓഫ് ചെയ്യണം അത്രയേ ഉള്ളൂ ഡി ഫോം ഓഫ് ചെയ്യണം അതായത് ഡി ഫോമിന് ഒരു ബട്ടൺ ഉണ്ടാവും അതിന് ഞാൻ കാണിക്കണം see if i select this one it deform is there yeah deform is there so but i don't want a uh, deform for these bones these control bones i don't want so i can switch it off but uh, you will have difficulty to switch off for everything so what we should do is we should select everything and then Just make sure that all are selected and then press alt and then no for everything will be switched off and okay guys tomorrow uh, we will see huh um, okay so we were morning what you are practicing if there is what where you are going you are going to perform you will go on mud mines in institute land over അവിടെ അപ്പോ അവിടെ ആരില്ലേ അവിടെ ആ ബിൽഡിംഗ് എന്താ പറയാ ആ ഹാ ബാക്കിയൊക്കെ കഴിഞ്ഞു അല്ലേ കോമ്പോസ്റ്റിംഗ് സോഫ്റ്റ്വെയർ ത്രീ ഡി അനിമേഷൻ മാത്രം ഇല്ല അവിടെ റെനോവേഷൻ പോയി കൊണ്ടിരിക്കുകയാണോ ഇതില് ഓഹോ ഓക്കെ okay vishnu and sri hari uh, thanks for attending uh, tomorrow same time uh, uh, same time we will meet uh, okay okay yeah yeah okay sri hari thank you yeah thank you bye bye